we are here to talk about the future of hybrid working. Um, hybrid working is a real buzzword at the moment that's going on and I'm sure you've all picked up on it. Um, so I'm, I'll just introduce myself, I'm Head of Property Management at the Met Office. So I look after all the Met Office's property and that's weather and climate by the way, not the police. Some people get confused. Um, so we have a big head office down in Exeter and we have a number of sites all over the world where we um, instrumentation for temperature, humidity, etc., to then feed into the models to then give you a weather forecast. And I look after all of that. And I'm going to ask um, Tony and Lucy to introduce themselves. Okay, hello, hello everybody. Um, so I'm Anthony Wiltshire. I'm the Director of Workplace and Facilities at uh, Edelman, which is the biggest PR company in the world, certainly the biggest privately owned PR company in the world. And we've got clients like um, HP, Starbucks, um, uh, Microsoft, lots of lots of big clients. So I look after the office uh, in central London and our Dublin operation. And uh, like everybody else, life changed 18 months ago. Uh, so we've been trying to get to grips with that and understand what's been happening. And, uh, and we're also looking at uh, moving to a new office, which we found now. So uh, we're really looking at ways to introduce hybrid into that new office and to, uh, to work with that creative, you know, creatively. So lots of changes. Lucy? Yeah, uh, good morning. Good morning, everyone. My name's Lucy Evans. I'm the head of HR and training at, at Ascot Racecourse. Um, very similar. So I look after a staffing group and my team look after a staffing group of about two, two and a half thousand staff, um, the majority of which are um, casual. So work on race day and events days here at the racecourse. Um, so we are, it's fair to say that the, 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 the notion and the idea and the practicalities of hybrid working are challenging, um, to say the least, because we're a service-based industry. So um, hopefully we get some sort of main themes going and topics going for all of you and that you can relate to some of the themes that we speak about today. So. Okay, so we have actually discussed beforehand, surprisingly, and we've come up with three themes that we're going to talk about today. The first one is flexibility then what good things have come out of COVID would be the second one. And the third one is about wellness, which I think for a lot of companies has become quite a big thing over the last 18 months. So if we look at flexibility, um, certainly from the Met Office's point of view, we recruit from all over the world. So we're looking at flexibility from a point of view of location, um, how you do your work, and um, will it help us with recruitment? So those are the sorts of questions that, that we have in our minds. So I don't know if the two of you have um, any experiences that, that you could share with others. Um, so flexibility wise, I mean, I mean clearly uh, the last 18 months have, have demonstrated that. One of, one of the hats that I wear obviously is uh, um, business continuity and disaster recovery planning. And um, Clearly, we've never had a better test of our DR and business continuity <laughs> plans than we have over the last 18 months. Um, and what we recognised when, uh, I was saying to somebody a little bit earlier on, when we were watching the news uh, with coronavirus uh, in Madrid, in Spain, um, in Italy, you, you were looking at it thinking, oh, that doesn't look very good. I mean, I hope everything's okay. But um, what I didn't realise, and I think perhaps what all of us didn't realise, is it's a bit like that guy standing on the beach with the tsunami in the distance, and you could just see that little white line a long way off, but it was coming, and it was going to hit, and, um, and perhaps we, did, we certainly didn't recognise that. And of course, so for us, when we realised we were suddenly going to be hit with this, uh, we, we went into overdrive with uh, testing our, our um, basically made everybody work from home a few weeks or a few days before the actual... Uh, um, lockdown started and we tested our Office 365 and, and uh, you know our whole process there so so really um, it, it, it turned us very flexible almost overnight um, and of course it's changed everything now yeah. yeah 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 so same very very similar circumstance so it's sort of um, it was something that I think it's fair to say that no one could ever predict you no. know when, when, when we yeah we all read the news and read articles etc and we knew that something was bubbling away over in China but actually um, the pace of what actually came was just it's exactly that we went into this disaster recovery mode and we set up a task force um, which was the board and myself were involved um, so our head of technology as well 
and it was exactly the same within 48 hours. So we were literally running at our business model before coronavirus was 98% um, on site. 98% staff on site, so we had no field based staff. And then within 48 hours, our tech team turned everything around and 100%, well, I say 100%, 95% <laughs> off site. Yeah. Because we still had essential workers here, i.e., our grounds and gardening staff that needed to be here for obvious reasons to look after the turf and the track, etc. But the rest of our staff within 48 hours were deployed off site. So that's that's that that that's the element of like I said, that that sort of almost resilience um to know that that one of the opportunities and benefits, um, if you can call it that, of the corona you know, the COVID nineteen pandemic was actually it did actually force individuals to work from home. Yeah. So yeah. And of course one of the things that happened as well is that we just had no idea we had no idea how long this was going to last. We all suddenly left our offices. Um, people still had season tickets for the trains. All of this stuff was happening. And nobody knew what was this going to be, two weeks, three weeks? Nobody could imagine it was going to be months and months. And here we are 18 months on. Yeah. Um, it's extraordinary. Yeah, it nothing, is. nothing like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah definitely. So, so from the Met Office's point of view, um, we obviously have weather forecasters. And again, in a much a similar situation to you, our weather forecasters worked 12 hour shifts and they always worked on premise. And we had spent a good couple of years trying to get um, the idea that they could work more flexibly from home. Um, and within two weeks of the coronavirus pandemic, we accelerated a, an IT project um, that had been sitting there for years. And within two weeks, all our weather forecasters um, could then work from home. So I think there was a lot of Certainly in our company, there was a lot of um, impetus to get things done very mm. quickly. And again, like you've both said, our business continuity things mm. just had to kick mm. in um, mm. at that point as well. Mm. So um, the other thing we want to talk about, and it's, you've both sort of touched on it a little bit, are, are the good things that have come out of COVID. So for us, probably one of the really interesting the things that's come out of COVID is that because our weather forecasters no longer have to work um, in the office to do their shifts, they're able to do really simple things like have dinner with their family. So before they go on a night shift, they can have dinner um, with their family and then go into their office at home and, and work the night shift in their own house, which has um, meant that from a productivity, a morale point of view, um, all of those things get paid back, I think, to the company um, because people feel that they're being treated well um, and been looked after, and that's made a massive difference to, to us. Um, are there other things that you've got that you would like to hang on to from, from COVID? I think, I think for us, perhaps, because we are uh, a global company, uh, a lot of our staff might be working with people in uh, the Far East. Um, they, they may have to come into the office at 4 o'clock in the morning because that's when they're going to need to speak to somebody in Japan, or they could be working till 10, 11, 12 o'clock at night. Um, and then having to leave central London. And I think probably, and it's, 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 maybe it's a, it's a British culture thing, but there's definitely a culture of presenteeism mm -hmm. uh, and having to be in the office or having to be seen to be in the office mm -hmm. and maybe having that, um, uh, that sort of uh, um, sense that you need to be the last person out and the first person in. And certainly that's changed now, um, uh, but perhaps now it's more about making sure that you're always green and you're always actually <laughs> online, I don't know. Um, so I think it's a good thing, but conversely now, perhaps now that the tide has turned and offices are reopening, um, maybe now there's more of a fear, and I don't know whether it's a, a reality, but perhaps there's more of a fear now that people who are still at home are going to in some way be um, struggling to be seen. And it's those water cooler moments mm -hmm. and it's those passing people in corridor conversations that you get that were just so natural in the office mm -hmm. that it's quite difficult, clearly, you know, if you're working from home to be able to do that. So I think the whole hybrid thing is really, we've got to try and tackle yeah. that. Yeah. So it's good, but it's kind of possibly yeah. starting to become a little bit awkward now. Yeah. 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 And, and yeah, agree. So it does, it, do, it does feel as though, um, and I'm sure you've got experiences of this, it does feel as though the tide is turning slightly. Um, but the op I think it's a really key point that Linda makes, and Tony, in terms of 
those opportunities to give individuals, i.e. if it's just the simplicity of life, of, have, of being able to sit down with your family and enjoy family quality time and not be stuck on a train or not be stuck mm. on a plane, um, you know, commuting, for example. And, and, and I know that sounds quite, it does sound quite green, but actually that, that's the simplicity of life, surely. Um, so I do, I do honestly believe that COVID-19 has, has exacerbated that and has provided us with that. Um, and we need to, in a way, we need, to still, we need to still continue to discuss it. And that leads really nicely on in terms of that well-being piece, yeah. because yeah. as HR professionals, and I'm not alone in saying that, we've been talking about well-being for many years. <laughs> well-being and welfare for many, many years. But actually, the, one of the beauties, and like I said, the opportunity of COVID-19 has actually brought that onto the top of the business agenda. Um, and to discuss, but to thoroughly discuss about what well-being truly means. So from a mental health point of view, um, I'm sure you've all sort of, um, you know colleagues that have been on mental health first aid training, for example. So that again is another opportunity that COVID-19 has produced as for us as a business and for other businesses as well. But I agree, it does, it does feel as though the tide is turning somewhat. And I wonder whether that is um, an element of human behavior. You know, we're very competitive as individuals. And once we see one person in or two people in, it's like, well, is it the fear of missing out? Am I missing out on something? What am I missing out on? Mm. And maybe that, that's an element that is driving, driving those behaviours, possibly. Big, yeah, a big thing will so, be the technology to make yeah. sure yeah. That, uh, that people who yeah. are at home uh, aren't, aren't missing out. But of course, the other benefit, of course, is that um, now you don't need to worry so much if you've got an Amazon delivery or a plumber coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. not the same as it was before. I yeah. think it'll be interesting to see what happens with clothes as well. Yes, <laughs> yes. Because uh, dressing smartly for events like this uh, certainly isn't what I do at home. <laughs> so it'll be interesting yeah. from that point of view as well. Um, so one of the things I am grappling with a little bit is how to use the space. Mm. So the Met Office has gone from 100% in the office, building that holds 1,500 people, mm. to saying to people they only need to be in the office for 40% of the time. That significantly increases my empty space. Mm -hmm. So we own the building. So it's how do I then think about using that extra space? Um, Met Office is a civil service organisation, so part of that is discussions with government as to whether parts of our building could be used as a government hub so other civil servants using the space. But I've also um, discussed a few with a few people last night the concept of the office becoming a destination. So what do you do in the office that's different to what you would have at home? So your things like about you know banging into people and having that conversation. Yeah. How do you make that happen though when when people are at ho home and some people are in the office? I don't know if mm -hmm. you've had any thoughts around, around that. Well, we, we are actually in the process of moving office, and I say we're in the process of it. We found a new office. We will be uh, starting our fit out early next year in the spring. And clearly, uh, you've got to find that sweet spot between what, what, what you've had for the last 10 or 15 years, um, your property strategy for the next five or 10 years, depending on what, what, the, what the, uh, the office is, and also recognising that people are working in a very different place. And I think for us, what we recognised very quickly was uh, a key thing was to make sure that the meeting rooms and the meeting experience is as good as it can be. And I think we're still working on that, but we're, we're getting there with that. Um, and also for us now, it, we recognise quite quickly that the office is a place of congregation mm -hmm. and collaboration and frankly, if all you do is go into the office and sit down and answer the telephone and, and send emails, well, you don't need to go in. You don't need to put yourself at jeopardy or, frankly, everybody else on yeah. the tube or whatever it happens to be. You just need to work very differently. Um, I look after it at uh, the workplace team. So we've got, uh, you know, we've been, we've been in pretty much consistently all the way through, much the same way that you've got uh, yeah. staff yeah. who've been there. Because... We've still been having to send, uh, you know, Xboxes out to influencers or whatever it happens to be. You know, we've 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 still carried on doing that side of things, and we've been maintaining the office and trying to make sure that that's okay. But at the same time, really recognizing that we need to present a different offer um, because you can't just expect people to come back and for it to be same old, same old. Yeah. It has to be something different. As I said, you know, I think that really 
uh, what we're experiencing now. We, we have 600 staff. Uh, generally on a Thursday, we've got about 250 coming in. So we've actually got quite a good amount of people coming back. We have retooled the office and uh, uh, spaced out the, the desks so that people don't feel like they're like that yeah. anymore. Yeah. Um, so we've got probably at the moment about 400 desks. Uh, so we, we're nowhere near capacity at the moment, but there's a whole lot of different stuff now. It's, it's really now it's about coming back into the office. Um, we're finding that certain teams will say, right, Thursday we're all going to come in. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, uh, the teams want to come together on particular days because they bounce off each other and they get a lot of, a lot of news. And there's a real joy, actually, mm-hmm. um, when you see people back yeah. in the office and interacting with each other again. But absolutely, it's all about... Uh, collaboration and working differently now it's yeah. not not the same as it used to be at all yeah yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah again quite similar yeah. so um, we we like I said before COVID we were pretty much 100% on site um, and then COVID hit 95% um, off site but we're trialing we're trialing um, with agile working so mm. we introduced so rotor policy um, set up staff forum groups online, um, got thoughts and ideas on whether it would work, whether it wouldn't work, etc., etc. And the main consensus is, yeah, let's trial it. So we're, we're still trialing it. Um, we're going to review it quarter by quarter, and we are reviewing it. So we're getting, which kind of goes against the grain in somewhat, but we do need some data, some raw data. But, but department rotors are coming into HR, so we can just see and assess data. But it's, it's looking about a 60-40 split. Mm. Um, you know, you get the usual frequent days, the Tuesday, Wednesday, yeah. Thursdays. Mm. In, yeah. But, you know, in the main, the most important part, I suppose, for us was just identifying. We held all staff Zoom calls, Ooh. and our CEO is very, very good at monthly all staff Zoom calls um, to gather thoughts and ideas with a theme of welfare all the way through, so well-being and welfare all the way through. And um, some of the ideas that were coming through is about the enticing back into mm. the office was, um, you know, doing bake-offs and, oh, yeah, yeah. and providing safe spaces. Yeah. Um, to avoid the whole sitting at your desk mm. and just mm. accessing emails. Mm. So to, to, to create the safe space plus also the conversations mm. and yeah. the debates yeah. Yeah. Um, which you just you just can't mm. in your own home environment you couldn't you can you can never replicate yeah. that no. um, so that's 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 some, just some of the ideas that we've sort of been trying so try, trialing agile working and then like I said some of the ideas and suggestions so our staff events because we've obviously put on events all year round yeah. here, but our staff events have actually, we've started to introduce them back in again. Mm. So we're planning up for our um, Christmas party. Yeah, we are too. Yeah. Um, yeah. We're planning, departments are planning their sort of coffee mornings, etc., etc., etc. So, yeah, things things do feel as though they're back in sort of full swing. Mm. Yeah. 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 Somewhat. So, yeah. so out there, have any of you found any solutions then um, mm-hmm. to this particular issue? I'm sure we're all grappling with the same things. Does anybody want to share? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Is that better? Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So, from a well-being perspective, uh, we actually asked our people what social activity they'd want to do. We use Teams as a a technology platform. So we've actually now got Teams set up which are based on hobbies, Mm -hmm. knitting, uh, or whatever takes your fancy, football. So people can join those and then just talk rubbish on them Mm -hmm. during the day and exchange notes and banter under that Teams chat function. Uh, That's worked quite well. Uh, And it's grown all the time. Uh, because somebody can just come up with a, another team and just add it to the list. Yeah. can get a bit distracting, obviously, but that's a balance that we all as managers need to try and instill because we're not f- meeting face-to-face to, as you say, have those corridor conversations mm. and chat about what you did at the weekend. Mm. So it provides that function. So that works quite well. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And your colleague in here wanted to say something. Yeah, hello, it's Indy Sira, London School of Economics. Um, 
We have a specific brewing problem in relation to well-being, which is that the trend has been for the last two years that our staff are taking less and less leave. Right. And when they're taking leave, it's got to be special enough to take. But because, you know, Amazon and all the rest are happening and we've been uh, a little bit lighter in carryovers, what we're actually finding is behavior is changing. And, you know, we can see we're heading towards a crisis by the end of 22 when we, um, you know, we'll probably have about 70% of our staff not having taken 50% of their leave. So I don't know if this is just unique to me, but others must be having these issues mm -hmm. as well as to how do you resolve those issues, mm -hmm. uh, which actually go against the trend of what you're saying and what people might feed back to you in relation to well-being. It's very true because, yeah. well, I mean, I've still got 20 days to take before the end of the year, so I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely in that boat. Yeah. And I think that that, that, is the, that is the problem. I think a lot of people have thought, well, what's the point? Because if I go somewhere, there's all of the faff of going through um, the airport yes. and the yeah. tests and everything else. Uh, or if I'm going in uh, somewhere well, in a staycation, um, I don't know what it's going to be like, what the experience is going to be like going around there. And I have done a little bit of that now, so um, it, it's okay. <laughs> actually, it's not a, it's not actually a problem at all. But um, but yeah, it's, it, I agree with you. It's almost like it needs to be an event now mm. because if people have been at home a lot, of the, you know, in the past, just having some time off. Um, yeah, it does feel it does feel quite different. So yeah, I've I've, I've got a crisis. <laughs> I've got to take it, and I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, at the moment. I think there'll be a lot of people carrying over holiday this time around. Yeah. But I think as well, the other thing that's, that's uh, uh, we talked about Zoom calls. Now that we've got people coming back into the office, and you know, like, as I said, we've got you know, 200 plus, I think tomorrow we'll probably have 300 looking at how people are booking their desks, how it's going to go. Um, that pre presents a, a, a new challenge, and the challenge is that uh, we, might, we might have a meeting room with 20 people in it, in the past, we would have said, you can only have 10 in there, but now we're back to 20, if they fancy doing that. You've then got the 20, 30, whoever it is, manage, uh, amount of people who are uh, on Teams and dialed into that, that uh, meeting experience. And of course, one of the managers said to me the other day, the problem with doing a client pitch when you've got uh, some of your staff uh, working remotely is you haven't got that opportunity to go and kick somebody under yeah, the table and say, stop yeah. doing that, you know, yeah. or whatever it happens to be. You haven't got that opportunity. So you can't, uh, so the experience has got to be, it's definitely got to be better than it is at the moment because people who are at home are definitely disadvantaged because they're missing those nuanced ticks, facial, you know, just that fraction when someone's a tiny little picture, particularly if you're having a hybrid meeting, so you are uh, a lot of people with just the faces on the screen, but then you've got people in a meeting room and there might be 10 or 15 people in that meeting room, all tiny little faces in one corner on the screen. It's extremely difficult. Um, and I think we need to be, you know, we, we all need to try to find a better way. And I, I'm, still, I'm still looking for the tech. We've got cameras that zoom in. We've got microphones that can pick up anything further down the uh, down the room. Um, but someone's already started talking by then. Then the camera will look and it will search and it will zoom in on that particular person. So the technology is definitely getting better. But that's the that's the real challenge. It's when you've got a hybrid meeting and you've got people uh, a, a combination of people actually physically in the flesh. It's great to see people here today. Um, and then you've got people who are at home, and uh, that's the real struggle, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good idea. You see, is there a WhatsApp symbol for that? Okay, that's good to know. <laughs> is there a WhatsApp symbol for stop talking? <laughs> so, so, have you then thought about leave? Have you got problems with leave? As we well? have, yeah. And look, I don't, I don't think it's unique. It's, it's, it's. I think, I think it's safe to say it affects most businesses. It really does. Um, but we're offering, we always offer the facility to carry over. Um, but it's also about, very holistic, but it's also about having the conversation, you know, managers having conversations with their teams and actually dialing, dialing into their yeah. teams. And that's not about having a well-being conversation, it's about having a straightforward conversation and saying, look, you have X amount of holiday to take, I'm sure you're fully aware of that. Um, come on, I think it's about time that you do, you know, you do take it. Else, it's unfortunate, but you will lose some of those, it won't, you won't be able to carry them all over to the following year. 
Um, but that's an interesting point about sort of behaviours as well, mm. because we, we raced here. We had British Champions Day on Saturday here, and we had 26,000 guests. Um, and it's fair to say that the main themes that were coming out of staff is actually, I suppose at times, not arriving on time, um, not knowing, so not keeping a, abreast of what's going on in certain situations. So I, you, could, you could class that as a skills shortage somewhat. Um, but if you put it, put, and I said this to my team, if you put things into perspective, mm. you know, we haven't hosted that amount of guests in over two years. And that's the perspective of the situation, isn't it? Two years. <laughs> we have to all have, have that element of reflection at some times, don't mm, we? We yeah. have to. And again, that is the, in, in essence, that is the beauty of, of coming out of the COVID-19 pandemic is hopefully as individuals and as leaders, business leaders, we, we do have, we have to have the element of reflection and just be, and take it easy on ourselves to a certain degree that, you know, it's been two years, yeah, yeah. literally. Yeah. But yeah, it is, it is quite fascinating, but, but it is about having, to me, it's about managers and leaders having conversations with their team and just dialing in and saying, look, there's an element of, yeah. now, now the business world and now the traveling world, you know, the traffic light system is pretty much null and void now. Mm. Um, PCRs, you know, they've made it much easier, mm. and rightly so, travel industry, et cetera, getting back much far better back on its feet. You are able to travel, and you are able to sort of staycation. Um, go and spend time. Go yeah. and spend time. And of course, the other yeah. challenge is everybody has got a different attitude to coronavirus. And yes. we were laughing, talking about this a little bit earlier on. Yeah. Um, yeah. We th one of the things that we thought when we were starting to get people to come back we, um, at Edelman, what we've done is we've uh, we've said to everybody that our expectation it's an, and obviously it's down to people's individual. Um, opinion, but uh, our expectation is that if possible, we want you to spend 60% of your week in the office. Now that equates to three days, of, uh, three days a week. Now for some people that will be one day, for some people that will be five days a week. You know, it's really up to them however they want to do it and no one's got a, a gun against anybody's head telling them they have to do something. Um, and we were talking about the idea of how everyone has a different attitude to coronavirus and every, you know, some people are uh, completely terrified, they don't want the whole experience of coming into the office. Some people are kind of a bit agnostic, it's, it's sort of okay. Some people are absolutely terrified, um, sorry, are, are serial huggers. Mm -hmm. So you've got you know, that, whole, uh, that whole gamut of people. And then we were talking about the idea of perhaps uh, bands. So if it's red, you don't go anywhere near anybody. You know, everyone knows to stay away from you. If it's amber, you're sort of in the middle. And if it's green, you, you know, you're around hugging everybody. But our, our, our COO felt that that would make us look a bit like an all-inclusive holiday camp. So, <laughs> so, so we decided not to do that. But actually, you know, that, so that really then does come into the whole thing about managers having conversations with their staff because you look at your team and your team have all got a different attitude towards uh, how they're going to cope with this. And they've all got their own stories and they've all got their own circumstances. Uh, and we don't know what they've got at home. We don't know who they're living with. We don't know uh, medical circumstances. And uh, so it's, it, it, we have to be really yeah. careful um, yeah. how, we, how we approach it. And we have to have a lot more empathy, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I think so. So I'm, so I'm sure some of you have grappled with this idea of risk as well. Has anybody come up with any... Any thoughts? Because interestingly, the Met Office came up with the band spring as well, red, amber, green. Um, has anybody else thought about that? And, you know, the hesitation about do we shake hands or not? You know, I know that's... Do you want to say something? I think just, just people. Yeah. Mm. Don't label people. Yeah. I mean, I'm a scout leader. I'd get thrown at the scout association. So, have a conversation. Mm. Yeah. Just speak to people. Our industry is run by people. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Can't deal with people. No, that's mm. true. Yeah. 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 Mm. So what we got, I don't know whether you said 
Yeah. Do you set the We have got some, yes, yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. So when you're dialing in, dialing in just Okay. So you just haven't got a room shot. They're all, they've got their uh, laptops in front of them, they've got the services, and they just connect in and then view it. You still hear quite clearly. Well, that's, that's a good idea, mm. but. When you've got uh, a meeting happening and you've got everybody bringing their laptops into that meeting, what we find is that they then start checking their emails and they're doing everything else. They're not, that's it, they're not disciplined enough uh, to, uh, to do that. So, I, I, you know, what, what we find is that uh, yeah, people will get distracted, there'll be other stuff happening. So it's a lovely idea. Um, also, I find, I have to say, uh, Surface Pros, by a long way, are the most awkward ones <laughs> to connect to any in-room tech. And then we're going through that whole experience at the moment where we've been changing everybody's laptops and we thought, fantastic, USB-C, we universal connection has, a, has arrived, this is great. All we're gonna do is give one USB cable, USB-C cable, it's gonna give the camera, it's gonna give the microphone, it's gonna charge your laptop, uh, it's going to do all of this fantastic stuff. It's going to give you the Ethernet so you don't have to worry about the Wi-Fi and worry about somebody being outside on the Wi-Fi and then coming into the meeting room and still being connected to that yeah, access yeah. point so that the <laughs> signal's pants by the time they sit down. Um, so, we, so we thought, this is fantastic, but USB-C with the in-room equipment is uh, interesting when it's on a Mac, uh, is nigh on impossible when you've got it plugged into a Surface. And then we've got about four different types of HP laptops. Some of them take the charge, some don't. So, so it's really, you know, it's a, it's a really tough scenario. I was so excited when I thought, this is it. I can change all the in-room tech and I'm going to have one cable. How simple is this? You go into a meeting room, you plug that cable in, you don't need to do anything else. The mm -hmm. sensor, so the, the camera auto senses onto your laptop, the microphone, everything's nice and straightforward. No more problems, no more panic telephone calls with people on, on client yeah. pitches. Life is great, but it isn't, unfortunately. It's, uh, we haven't managed to find that solution yet. We've got some great, you know, we've invested thousands and thousands of pounds on in-room equipment. Um, some uh, microphones that are like black magic, how they can listen and hear that conversation whispered at the back of the room. Um, but yeah, people still complain. People don't like it. So yeah, so it, it's really, really tough. So unless, you know, if anyone's out there who's, who's got a magic bullet, Find me, tell me about it, I'd love to know, <laughs> because I haven't found it yet, and uh, I'm still looking, uh, especially as I'm about to buy a load more for, for our new office, so yeah. Does anybody, can MD answer that question? <laughs> <laughs> any, 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 anybody who's got, that, who's got that solution? I suspect from everybody's faces that everyone's feeling my pain. Oh, hang on, we've got oh. somebody. Oh. Uh, well, <clears throat> sorry, um, it's not to answer your question, but I was just, before you went off, it's actually, I wanted to... Um, talk about something else that you talked about earlier. Um, I work for Salesforce and um, we, pre-pandemic, we already had a program which was um, a giving back program. Yeah. And uh, we were talking earlier about how you can kind of get people to collaborate if they're not going into the office. So we, we have a, a volunteering program. So all of our staff are given um, 56 hours a year to go and volunteer. Yeah. And that can go across any expanse, you know, children's charities, scouts, um, or, you know, or age charities, whatever, um, even if it was like the school PTA. And so what you'd, we do is we have a, 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 some software where the, the, all the VTO, we call it, sorry, volunteering opportunities are advertised and you can just go on there so you can do cross-functional with different teams or you can set up your own team. Um, and what we find is coming together for the volunteering, obviously we're giving back to the communities, yeah. their charities or non-profits, and um, it also brings you together with your teams or either people outside of your team so you can get to still get to know people that might have joined during the pandemic, uh, the company, and it's a fantastic opportunity. You get there, so you're, you're helping, but you're also getting an opportunity to have those water cooler moments as well there. Yes. So it's great. That's terrific. Yes. Yeah, that's yes. a fantastic idea. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Um, I think I've been given the signal that uh, we have to end here. So, oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks very much, uh, Lucy and Anthony. It's been interesting. That's right. It's been, it's been great. I yeah. hope you all found that interesting, and we're here all day. So, if you want to come and talk to us, we, we're available. And yeah. give me your USB C yeah. solution. Yeah. I want to know. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so if thanks you can find very much, it. Everybody. Excellent. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.